I'm John O'Buchanan, and in this video we're going to be looking at MIDI Draw within the MIDI Step Sequencer. MIDI Draw allows us to create MIDI changes to a whole range of parameters, and it's incredibly useful whether you're just programming note data or whether you're beginning to look at MIDI controllers themselves. This is the track we're going to be working on while we look at the MIDI Draw options. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is to add some extra sort of small toms to this. I've got a sound lined up. And what we're going to do is to program that part, and then we're going to see what we can do with MIDI Draw to refine it and make it exactly what we need it to be. So I'm just going to record two bars of this. Okay, so there's two bars of toms, and what we're going to do is I'm just going to quantize those and put them absolutely in time, and we'll put a loop around them and just solo them as well. And then what we can do is to open up this region and begin to see what I've done. Now, the way that the library that I'm using for this uh, sound works is that the sounds that are highest up the keyboard are strongest, so they tend to be the loudest notes, and then notes that are further down, uh, the keyboard are more gentle so they become more intense. But what also happens is that within each individual key, I've also got velocity control. So I've got a strongly um, played hit, which I still have a uh, the opportunity to control over velocity, and then more quietly played hits, which I also have the opportunity to control over velo velocity. So what I can do here is to really go in in depth in order to make velocities be exactly what I want them to be. Now, within Logic, what we have a chance to do within the step sequencer is to see the strength of each individual note. And the sort of brighter the color, the stronger it is. And that's a useful sort of overview, but it doesn't really give us a lot of depth or a lot of understanding of exactly what exactly is going on within this region. So what I'm going to do is to open up what's called MIDI Draw, which is here. And this allows me to open up the automation parameters within uh, this particular region, and specifically, it allows me to draw in any changes that I might want to make. Now, over here in the bottom left-hand corner, I have a chance to choose the parameter that I want to change, and note velocity, because it's the only parameter that exists within this region at the moment, is the one that it's defaulted to. I haven't got any MIDI controllers, I haven't used any aftertouch, I haven't recorded any pitch bend data. Those things which are MIDI controllers in their own right might appear in this list, but they don't exist within this region. I've only got velocity. And if I turn on the MIDI outlight, then what we ha I have a chance to do is to hear the effect that any changes that I might make have on the sound. So when I click on this hit, I can hear its current velocity. And if I adjust it and click on it again, I can hear the difference. So I'm in a position to hear the changes that I make in real time, and that's fine. But what I can also do with this window is to adopt an approach that isn't just one note after another. I've only recorded two bars, but I might have 16 bars of toms here, which would take a long time for me to go through on a note by note basis. So what I can do with MIDI Draw is to come down to the toolbar and select the pencil tool. And what I can then do is to start thinking about creating ramps for notes instead. Now, the way that I've done that is to click just before the first note that I want to introduce, and I'm then dragging with my finger held down on the mouse to the point where I want it to, to back uh, to, to ramp to, and then I'm releasing. And when I do that, what I can do is to create these ramps. And of course, I can do the same thing in another direction if I want to. So if I want to have slopes that are moving the whole time, I like the little sort of articulation on this fourth beat a little bit brighter than the others. But what I can do with MIDI Draw by using the pencil tool is to create these ramps that create these very smooth undulating shapes. And once you get used to this approach, if you wanted to take the same shape and make it more extreme, that begins to become very quick when you work with this a lot. You can see that what I'm doing is just being very careful about the way that I'm selecting those positions. And now what I've done is to make that a much more extreme version of the same effect. And remember, if you create something that's too extreme, of course, you can simply just use undo, command and Z to go back to where you were before. 
and these strengths feel better to me. So what we've got here straight away is a MIDI region that we've created, and we've opened up a sort of automation lane specifically for this MIDI region. Remember, that's different from track automation. We're just looking at the parameters for this specific MIDI region, and what we've done is to use note velocity to create a shape that we like. So that's one particular type of MIDI data that we've looked at. What we're going to do now is to come out of solo mode. I'm actually just going to repeat that pattern so that it plays all the way through the track. And now we're going to add a new part to this piece, which will allow us to look at MIDI control in a slightly different way. What I've got here is a cello part, which is down here at the bottom. And I'm going to just record a little cello melody onto this piece. And then we're going to begin to see how we can bring it to life using that very same window. Okay, so there's a cello melody, and at the moment, it's all quite flat. We've got a nice sound, it's a nice sample that we're using, but what we don't have is any real sense of shape and phrase that's going into this part. Now, the way that this sound has been set up by uh, the manufacturer who makes it, this is LA Scoring Strings, um, and this is the solo cello patch. And the way that this works is like a lot of orchestral sample libraries, in that what I've got are two major controls which allow me to create data to bring this line uh, more in, into a more sort of musical realm. Now, the first one of those is simply volume control, but over MIDI. Now, what I mean by that is that I can control the volume of the part that's playing using a MIDI controller. And that is MIDI controller number 11, which is otherwise known as expression. And that's on this slider on my little controller uh, set here. Now, the other one that I've got is modulation, which is mapped to this fader here. And what that allows me to do is to call on samples that have been recorded at different dynamic strengths. So by moving this fader down, what I can do is to uh, go looking for sounds that were recorded quietly. And what I can hit do up here is to go and find samples that were recorded more strongly. Now, the reason why I haven't recorded those in real time is that you might not have controllers like this in front of you, and that's fine. What we're going to discover is that using MIDI Draw, we don't actually need physical controllers if we don't want them. We can create these effects almost sort of in post-production once we've actually recorded the notes, and here's how. So if I double click on this region, what I have a chance to do is to dive into this part that I've created. I'm going to just uh, make this region go back a single beat so that this first note will be heard. And at the moment, what you can see is that I had what I had before, which is a display showing me the note velocities of the notes that I've played, and that's fine. But what I actually want to do is to draw in some data for these two parameters that I've identified. And I'm going to start with modulation, which is going to control dynamics. So where it says note velocity, I'm going to click here and I'm going to look at the various options that are available to me and I'm going to select modulation, which is here. Now to start with, there will be no display. I can see the sort of outline of notes in the background, but this isn't what the modulation data looks like. In order to create, um, or at least in order to see the line of modulation data, what I need to do is to simply click to create a point. And having done that, what I'm then in a position to do is to create as many points as I like. So what I can begin to do is to think about a sort of sense of overall shape and phrase that goes into this part. So for example, I might decide that what I want to do is to have this whole phrase build to this note at bar four. Now, I don't want that to be a straight line. So what I'm going to do is just create some changes so that what we're doing is we're just moving through the different dynamic groups that relate to this sound. And what I might do towards the end of this note is just have it die away, drop away a little bit, so that we get less intensity just as that sound begins to fall away. Now, if I solo this, we'll be able to hear the effect that this is having on the part. Okay, so what we can hear is this extra intensity that happens when we go into this note. And what I can do is I can smooth that out in two ways. Firstly, I'm going to just make these two notes overlap a little bit. And what I'm also going to do is to have this peak or drop away a little bit more here and then peak a little bit later. And just so we can really hear that more extremely, we'll have that fall away more extremely towards the end. Mm. 
Okay, now you can clearly hear there that we've got a different intensity, a different playing strength uh, based on that line. And I suspect actually that would be slightly too extreme, but we'll worry about that in a little while. What I'm then gonna do is to have the second phrase broadly do something similar. I'm gonna have it come in nice and strong, and then what we'll have it fall away a little bit here, and then again a little bit here, and then we'll allow this last note to sort of swell before it to it fades away. Now, obviously, this technique that we're looking at is going to be of particular interest to those of you who are interested in working in media composition, where a lot of what we do with samples is to spend time thinking about how to bring a real sense of shape and phrase to a part, and this is one of the main ways in which we go about the process of doing that. And next to that, what I can do is also maybe think about adding that expression line. Remember, this is volume control. This isn't going to change the intensity of the playing of the cellist that I'm programming here virtually. Instead, what it's going to do is to allow me to set a volume for each individual note. So effectively, we're kind of automating the volume on playback. And the only way to know how loud things need to be is to put this cello solo sort of back into context within this piece. So let's do that now. We'll come out of solo mode, and what we'll do is we'll, um, we'll find our part, which is here, and we'll get ready. I'm just going to set um, an overall sort of expression uh, mark at the beginning, just to sort of set an overall volume, and then if we need to make changes as it plays through, we can. Okay, so it'd be quite nice if this second phrase sort of built up in volume a little bit and maybe even more particularly leading into this last note. And whilst I like the dynamic shape that I've got in this first phrase, this note's getting lost a little bit because it's where the dip is happening the most uh, from a dynamics point of view. So what I'm also going to do is just create a few points here to allow me to push up the volume of that, keeping the slightly less intense playing, but compensating for that with a bit of extra volume. So what we've done within this video is to begin to see what we can do within the MIDI editor when we open up its own little MIDI draw automation window. This allows us to go and find MIDI parameters to draw lines of data on top of any notes that we might have programmed. And we could do that with note velocity in order to create um, variations in how strongly each note sounds. And what we can also see here is that we can create lines of MIDI controllers as well. So if you don't have a physical controller to allow you to draw these lines in in real time, no problem, you can add them afterwards.